Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church on live stream and my few people I have in here. Um, we're going to open this up in prayer. Um, I really want you to pay attention to this message and uh, really think about what I'm saying here because if you take this word to heart and understand prayer, it can radif ra uh, radically change your, your way of life in, in walking with God. Uh, a lot of the things that I've said up until this point actually connect to this message about Jesus being your high priest and also who you go to on the daily in a time of need. You know, we have to understand this office. Um, but let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray that you just open our hearts and our minds to receive your word, Lord God. Let this word be planted in our hearts, Lord God, that we would learn to walk in your ways and uh, understand how to connect directly to you and manifest your presence here on earth, Lord God. I pray that you just be with each and every person that's at home right now watching live and uh, open their minds for this message, Lord God, and let your Holy Spirit go forth before me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're starting a, a new message called Unhindered Prayers. Uh, when I used to study the Word of God, I would come across these places in the Bible where it would say, ask what you will and it will be done for you. And, you know, I'm like, wow, what, what is this? You know, uh, you know, how, how is this work, you know, and how come everybody's not using it? How come uh, I don't see it all the time where uh, you ask what you will and it will be done for you? Uh, and basically, this message started about 10 years ago in my heart. I began to seek and understand what it is to pray and to understand what it is to be a child of God and to operate as a child of God in this earth. We are the mediators because Christ is in us. I want to start the scriptures today at uh, James chapter 5 verse 13. And I want you to listen to the words really carefully. Is anyone among you suffering? Question mark. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. Somebody say, the prayer of faith, prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your sins or your trespasses to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. Uh, and hopefully you watched my messages prior to this of last week and the week before. Uh, because it kind of explains... Uh, a lot of the things that we're kind of tapping into. Um, but it says, the prayers of faith will save the sick. And it also says to call for your elders of the church. And I ask myself, why the elders of the church? The elders of the church have learned how to walk with God. And the prayers of faith will save the sick. Faith is a very big key in your prayers. And we're going to uh, get into a couple of these different things that God requires in your prayer and in your prayer life. Uh, it says, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And we uh, talked about last week how, uh, you know, Peter even says that an argument with your wife will hinder your prayers. And this message is titled, unhindered prayers because there's something about the Holy Spirit that we have not yet learned to connect to 100% when it comes to praying and it's the flow of this river I've been talking about and if you have things in your heart like bitterness, unforgiveness uh, anger, wrath you know these things that hide in your heart it blocks the flow and connection of the river Amen. 
And what I'm trying to tell you is our connection to the life in God, in Christ Jesus, is flowing like a river. But these things in our life stop us and it's like a dam that stops up the river. And that's why Jesus makes it very known uh, to us that, you know, we forgive. Not because people deserve to be forgiven. We forgive uh, because it's what heals us. Uh, because Jesus Christ forgave us even though we didn't deserve it, so we, now we forgive. And we have to understand these things. You know, most people are like, man, they, they don't deserve forgiveness and this and that. Neither did you. That was the whole thing that Jesus was pointing out. He did this while we were still sinners. He did this uh, uh, God did this thing while we were just broken in our sins and we had no hope. And that is what the foundation of the gospel is born out of. We're indebted to the kingdom of God. You know, Paul says the work that I do, you know, I don't do to get saved. I work uh, because it's a debt. Praise God. He first forgave me, so I forgive others, right? So we have to understand, like, the things that Jesus says all throughout the Bible are necessary to walk with God. The simple things. People get so caught up in some of the rules and the do's and the don'ts. But did you love your brother? Did you have mercy on your brother? Did you have grace for people? Are you spending your time building people up or tearing them down? You know, and, and, and it really makes you think, you know, as we walk around this life and uh, uh, we, we encounter so many people, you don't know why somebody is where, they're, where they are. You only walk by and make a quick judgment assuming that you know. But what I've found is when somebody starts to tell you why, you begin to understand. Every person you meet has a story. Right? But I, I really want you to understand these things that, that even a perfect stranger should be treated with grace and kindness. Right? So, I want to keep going in this passage. It says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. The heavens gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. James brings up the fact that Elijah was a man just like you and me. We so many times look at Jesus and say, well, duh, you know, he's the son of the living God. You know, he can do this and he can do that. But what James is pointing out is the fact that Elijah is just like me and you with a like nature like ours. But when he prayed, it stopped heaven from even raining. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I want to paraphrase real quick is the story of Elijah. And there's several things about Elijah and how he operates when you uh, go through and see how he thinks and how he walks in this faith, you know. But it says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And it said that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain for three years and six months. But let me give you the backdrop of this story. So Elijah prays that it would not rain. And the heavens were stopped up and it did not rain. And this is what James is pointing out. And he's telling this to us that we would understand that we have this same kind of a authority with God. We're, we're just like Elijah in nature, but yet when he prayed, it didn't rain. What he prayed for, it happened. But when you go to the story of Elijah, so he prays and he stops up this uh, the heavens from raining, which was what God had ultimately decreed. So he was praying in the will of God. And that's a story for 
next Sunday, well, the Sunday after maybe. But you got to understand, you know, when it comes time, three and a half years, uh, and God tells Elijah, you know, go up here, it's, it's going to rain. You know, Elijah says, I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. It was not raining yet. But Elijah could hear in the spirit the sound of rain. And he tells Ahab, you know, go up here before it starts raining. It ain't even started raining yet. So you see automatically that he has a, a, a connection to God in the spirit. And God spoke to him, right? So he's listening with his spiritual ears and he hears the abundance of rain. So when he goes to pray for the rain, this is the, the funniest thing about it. And this is where you see earnest prayer. You know, and this is where you see uh, persistent prayer and prayer in faith. Uh, you know, so he has the servant go with him and, and he tells the servant, look, go up here and go by the sea and watch the rain come. And, uh, you know, so pray, uh, Elijah falls between his knees and begins to pray earnestly. Uh, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, right? So he begins to pray and the guy comes back and he says, it's not raining, right? He said, what do you see? Nothing, man. The clouds are clear, man. It's, it's, the skies are clear out there. And Elijah says, go back again. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. So this man of God is literally laying here praying. And somebody's coming and telling him, hey, man, it's not raining. And, and in faith, Elijah says, go back again. And the Bible says he did this seven times. Somebody say that is persistence right there. Mm. Yeah, say that is faith when uh, the world all around you is saying this and it's not happening. And, and in the physical sight and in the physical mind, this ain't happening. But Elijah's like, go again. So for seven times, this guy goes up. He's probably like, Elijah, I ain't going back up here, man. It ain't going to rain. He thinks Elijah's crazy, right? He's like, no, nah, Elijah, it ain't raining, but I'm going to go again. You know, every time he come back and said it's not raining, Elijah's like, go back. And he said he did that seven times. Why? Because he had the faith that it was going to rain. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So this faith and this persistence is powerful when it comes to the things of God. And when it comes to praying, okay, uh, and from there, I'm going to go to James chapter one, verse five, which is back a couple of pages. And I want to, I want to really break this open to you. If you can hear the word of God and just listen to what it's saying, listen, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete and Lacking, or perfect and complete and lacking nothing. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. Here we go. Y'all ready? And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. All right, so with this scripture right here in James, he's saying, uh, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For if he doubts, it's uh, he's like a, a sea driven and tossed by the wind. He's a wave just getting tossed back and forth. But let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man. Now this double-minded man uh, is a whole other subject, right? Uh, how many knows that you know the flesh wars against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, but God is trying to get you to grow strong to where your spirit man rules over the flesh. Amen. And uh, when, you, when you grow with God and you walk with God, He's strengthening your spirit, sharpening you 
To be able to walk and be strong in the Lord and have faith. Other people don't understand that faith. Uh, just like Elijah and his servant. Uh, you know, his servant didn't understand that kind of faith. But Elijah's like, no, I know it's going to rain. So keep going back, right? Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. And there's a little bit of turning, guys. And, you know, I try to show it to you in the Scriptures so that way... Uh, you know, you see it for yourself. And it's not just my grand idea that I'm up here talking about. Uh, but this is the Word of God. And guess what? If it contradicts what you believe, you need to change. The church didn't die. God didn't change. Everything in the Word of God is true. Let every man be alive. Come on. Are y'all with me? Amen. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Listen, man, all of this stuff is foundational. It's key to get you to understand how to pray and how to be connected with God and what works and what ain't going to work. Number one, we figured out that uh, a double-minded man is not going to get anything from God. If you're half in the world and half out of the world, half in the will of God and half in your own will, you ain't going to see your prayers answered. But when you die to yourself, like the scripture tells us, and you put your will aside to do the will of God, man, anything you ask, it'll be done for you. Yeah. And that's the key. People don't understand that to be a Christian is not this half-washed American idea of what we say Christian is. To be a Christian is to be completely sold out to the kingdom of God and to do the will of God. Hallelujah. And that right there is what sets you apart as a man of God. Yes. And this is uh this is the kind of stuff that we need to understand. Listen, uh, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. This is First John chapter three verse eighteen. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him. Listen, this is key right here. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Why? Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of Jesus of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment so this is what we should be doing number one our faith should be found in Jesus Christ our faith should be fully in Christ why because of what we talked about last week that Christ fulfilled the righteous requirements and fulfillments of the law of the uh, the shadows and the types and uh, the uh, ceremonies and everything the Jewish people had to do was fulfilled in Christ. Now we are to walk in the commandments of Christ and walk in Christ and be like Christ in this world because that's what set us free. You know, the law was against us. But the gift of God is that Jesus was nailed to the cross right. that we can be free. That's right, amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. But it's not that we can use, uh, you know, like Paul says, it's not to be used. Your freedom is not to be used for the pleasures of your flesh. Because look, man, if that's how you think, then you don't even know God. Come on. The, 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 the freedom is in Christ. That we would walk and be as he is in the earth. Be like him. Renew our minds by the word of God to walk and change and, and, and go in the direction that Christ would go. Even when it's against your flesh, your, your flesh is fighting you, your pride is keeping you, you fight back in the spirit and subdue that thing. See, you have to learn to grow up in the things of God and to walk with God. See, this is the only way you're going to see these things, uh, these supernatural things. Like when you pray, man, God starts moving. But how many knows you have to come to a place to where you die? That is what the gospel is.
is all about. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. And if you can understand that, that we died because he died. And we're being united in his death. The Bible says in the King James that we're planted with him in death. And we'll also be raised. Not even just in the afterlife. See, that's what people don't understand. We have the resurrection of the Lord in this life. Amen. And that's where the power is. Yes, Lord. That's when you die to yourself and your will. Mm -hmm. Keep that man buried and walk in the resurrection. That's the gospel. See, and that's where the power is. Are y'all with me? Uh, so, we know now that, you know, prayers of faith, prayers of faith. And a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We have to get that part right. And if a heart condemns us, God is greater than a heart and knows all things. In other words, you're not fixing to come to God and start talking to God and think you're getting one over on God. God is bigger than your heart and knows all things. So you're going to have that condemnation feeling in your heart. But what I told you last week about confessing your sins to the Lord, that is freedom. That is what, what sets you free. Confess your sins to the Lord and He is faithful and just to forgive you. And guess what? It's as if it never happened. Right. Wow. That's the power of the gospel. See, you keep trying to do it because you're a good person, right? Good for you. But you're missing it. That's why I'm so glad that I was a rebel for every cause. Because one of the things I do, I wake up and know I don't deserve to live. Yeah. Right. I wake up and know I don't deserve to be blessed by God. Hallelujah. I wake up and know that God done this. Right. <laughs> and that's my freedom. And see, now I can walk in faith because I know that God's got me. He took me from here to here. I seen that. He took me from there to there and there to there to there. Now I look back over my life and just see the journey that God has brought me through and has built my faith. When there was certain death in front of my eyes, I seen that God delivered. Amen. And He brought me to a place to where I wanted to die. Right. That was the most liberating point in my whole entire life because I didn't care. After that, I didn't care about fame. I didn't care about being a big preacher. I didn't care about this or that. I literally did what I did because I love God and I love the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. So when I went out and I, I stretched myself beyond your imagination of stretching myself to help people and do things for people, it was because I love people and I love God. No longer was it about raising up into some kind of uh, man of God that everybody looks up to and whatever. Do so what? Mm. But it was liberating. Because it didn't matter what he said, what she said, what does God say? <laughs> and if God is for me, who can be against me, right? Come on. So anyway, uh, let's keep moving with the word real quick. James chapter 4, verse 1. And, and if I were you, I would highlight these things in your Bible and, 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 and keep them in your understanding. Uh, because this was a journey that God took me on to begin to understand how to pray and how to pray with power. How to pray as a child of God with the authority of God. Uh, James chapter 4 verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. In other words, he's saying, man, you, you go to, through life and you try to uh, get all this ill-gotten gain. You do all these things because your, uh, your, your flesh and your desires for pleasure. And he's saying, but yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you do ask, you ask Amiss. And that's point number three. When you do ask, you ask amiss. Because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Uh, I want to skip down to verse seven. And it says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. 
Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. Somebody say your heart. Purify your hearts. You double-minded. All right, we're going to finish with uh, John chapter 15, man. I'm, I'm doing good, man. i got about five minutes left. Y'all ready? Come on. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? I seen you. I seen you. Uh, John chapter 15. Now, this is the gospel of John. Uh, and I really need you to come with me, man, because all of this is what, what really sets the message off. And I'm still trying to keep it within a 30-minute word. Uh, I really would love to preach for two and a half hours. Praise God. But let's not do that, right? Uh, you got to know your audience, you know, and that's part of knowing your audience. How I many know when people are scrolling, they're clicking, they're like, oh, they see two hours, they ain't even going to start watching it. You know? Amen. Uh, if I can get a little word in, it's better than no word at all, right? Uh, John chapter 15. I am, the, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. This language is, is, is something to remember. Abide in me, and I in you. You are clean for the words that I spoke to you. Now abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So, somebody said, without me, you can do nothing. No. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they burn, they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words, so I say my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you shall be my disciple. Now, you know, this is that verse, man, that, that when I was talking in the beginning, this is what I was talking about when I when I when I stayed. In, so I'm in Christ, right? I'm, I'm walking in God. So whatever I ask. You know, it's going to be done for me, right? So I said there's more to it than that. More to it. Number one, part of it is in understanding the word abide. He says you abide in me and I in you. Let my words abide in you. Mm -hmm. Then you will bear much fruit and my Father will be pleased. Are y'all with me? But without me, you cannot bear fruit. This word abide, I went to the Greek on it just to bring it out to you and let you get a deeper understanding. Uh, and, and abide is pronounced in Greek, it's meno, M-E-N-O. It means to abide, continue, dwell, endure, be present with, remain, stay, stand, tarry. To remain in or with someone. To be or uh, to be or remain united with them. To be or remain united with them. One with them in heart, mind, and will. Also to remain steadfast with endurance, persevering in it. So to abide in Christ is to remain, to stay. In him, but it's also saying that in order to really abide in Christ is to be one heart and one mind and one will with him. In other words, his will is your will. Are y'all with me? The Bible explains to us that those who are Christ have crucified their passions and desires. This is our war because your flesh is warring against the spirit. But those who are Christ and have grown up in the spirit have learned to crucify their own passions and desires, just like Jesus did. This is the growth. This is where we're going, that we would be the ministers of God. 
That we would be the mediators of God here on earth. But we're growing that we would die to our will and live to his will. Right? No longer is it about uh, he said, she said. No longer is it about uh, he don't deserve forgiveness. No longer is it about none of that because I'm dying to my will. And I'm accepting the will of God in my life and I'm living to that will. The old man is dead and buried. Amen. And I'm alive Amen. to God. Thank you, this is how you pray. Right? And if your heart condemns you, guess what? God is greater than your heart. Last week's message helps you deal with that, man. Without Christ, you can't bear fruit. You're clean because Christ is in you, right? Let's one more scripture and we're done. I know it's already 30 minutes. I love y'all. I know y'all love me. So we're just going to skip all the formals and get to it. John chapter 17, verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That includes me and you, right? That they all may be one. As you, Father, listen to his words, are in me. And I in you. That they also may be one with us. That the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given to them. That they may be one just as we are one. United together. One. I in them and you in me. Let me explain something to you. The Father cannot dwell in you without Christ. See, Jesus is saying, just how the Father, how you remain in me, or how you are in me, I am in them. You know, just how he told the disciples, I have gone and done my Father's will, you would go and do mine. We are in Christ. And it's Christ who is the actual sanctuary. Other than that, you're just dead bones. So the, the real understanding of being a child of God is that Christ dwells in us and the Father dwells in Him in us. Without Christ, you can do nothing. Without Christ, you don't even have the Father. If they would have known me, my Father, they would have known me also, right? So uh, we're going to stop it right here, man. But I really want you to take everything I just told you and just remember uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and you will receive nothing from God. The very first thing that you as a, a person of the world that don't know God, bring your sins before the Lord, repent, and turn to Him. Yes, God. That is the only prayer He's going to hear from you. Yes, Lord. That's the truth. That's it. That is your first step. As you've been walking with God and you've fallen away and then you feel the condemnation of your heart. Confess your sin. Yeah. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. You need to know this. Quit running from God. Quit running from God. It just gets worse. Right? Till you reach that place where you're all the way at the ground. There ain't nowhere to look but up, right? And praise God that when you do, uh, us as humans, we are that dumb and we keep running like that. That when we do cry out, he's waiting right there. To lift us back up, right? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. God is good, man. All the time. All the time. God is good. So when you ask, you ask amiss. See, and that, that's a, another point that you need to remember. You ask that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Number one, if you seek to do the will of God and you don't ask things for yourself, God will even do more than you ask or think. That's right. Man, God is a good, good father. Right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, so this is just breaking us into this uh, prayer message and beginning to understand uh, how we as children of God can uh, be com in communion with God. One in Christ and how the body is in communion with each other. Jesus in us and we are one like Him and the Father are one because He's in all of us and the Father is in us. Right? That's church, y'all. Praise God. I love you. Next week, uh, get with me Monday night, 7 p.m.
questions and answers. Love y'all. Love everybody in this building. God bless.